to demonstrate how to create a cubism photo using a photograph in Photoshop. So what I have here is I have a picture of a cow and a bull in um, a horse ranch. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create a cubism photograph out of this photo using tiles, colorized text techniques, and symbols. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to my layer panel. I'm going to create a copy of my background layer by hitting Command J, just so I have it. So I'm going to start in by using my marquee tool. And let's grab this little part of the horn up here. And I'm going to copy it. So I'm going to hit Command J. And you have to be on the layer that has it. So Command J. And then if I hit Command T, it's going to show the, the bounding boxes around it. And I can make it larger or smaller. I can rotate it. If I hold the Shift key, um, I can kind of, kind of squish it or stretch it out a little bit. If I hold the Command key, I can also skew it like that. Okay. So once I have that, I hit Enter. Okay. So now you can kind of see the edges here, but I need to make them more pronounced. So I'm going to double click on that layer. And I'm going to make sure the layer panels over a bit away from this so I can see both things. And then what will I want to do? Well, I could use bevel. Okay, if I click on it, maybe I want to bevel a little bit like that. Um, turn the opacity up on the edge. Um, you change the size. If I were really, really beveled, I'm going to do kind of more subtle. Uh, another thing I could do is an inner shadow, which adds a little bit of darkness inside. In this case, black. You can change that color. It doesn't matter. Okay, I'm not going to do quite that much, though. I can also add a drop shadow to it. Um, if I add the drop shadow, I could change this color. The color doesn't really matter because you'll see what we're doing with it in a bit. And then for that, I kind of like that it's all together. And then I'm going to hit OK on that one. So that's the first step. You're going to repeat this step a lot. So now I'm going to do another one. Um, maybe I want to do this part of the horn, okay? And I'm going to hit Command J, but if I do it right now, look at this, watch this. There's nothing on that, so I have to be on layer 1, Command J. Hit Command T, transform. And maybe I want to squish it a little bit, I don't know. Rotate it a little bit, something. Okay, I've done that. Skew it a little, sure. And then if I want to use the same layer style on my new layer, I go back to this layer that the style's on. I right click. I go down to copy layer style. I go to the other layer. I go down, right click, paste layer style. There it is. So now I have two. Okay, so we're going to do a couple more here. Maybe I want to do um, the other horn. Well, let's just start with the top piece. Make sure you're back on the layer that has the horn on it. Command J. Command T is a transform tool. Okay, you can maybe make it bigger, stretch it out a little bit. Don't worry about overlapping, it should overlap. And then maybe I want to use that same layer style. I should still have it copied, so I just go right click, paste. Yeah, I do. I have it. Cool. Um, since we did the horns, let's just do this last horn. Command J, Command T. Maybe I'll squish it in a little bit. Maybe I want to rotate it a little bit. Maybe I want it to overlap a little bit. Hit Enter. And then maybe I want to use that same layer style. Paste it. Cool. Now, let's do something different. Maybe I want to do this little um, trailer here. Horse trailer. And depending on what you pick, depends on how you do it. You have to make sure you're on the background layer again. Command J. Made a copy of it. Hit Command T. May want to pull it up a little bit. Make it a little bit larger. Cool. Um, and then maybe I'll do a different layer style. Well, let's see what we have here. Maybe I'll do it a little bit different. Maybe I want to add a stroke line. Black stroke. That puts a black line around the whole thing. You can change that color right here. 
The color doesn't matter because we're going to colorize the whole thing anyway when we're done. So if you want to change the color, you can. That's a really ugly color. I'm going to go to something different here. Okay. Maybe I also want to do um, a yeah, drop shadow. Why not? And maybe my drop shadow, I'm going to make it black. And I'm going to spread it out, move it a little bit away from it. And then hit OK. So now I have two different styles. But this edge of the dirt here is in front of the trailer. Well, that's easy enough. I just move my layers until it's in the front. Great, there it is. So I continue with this project. I continue doing this. It's very repetitive. So now I'm going to do the eyeball. I want to make the eyeball nice and big. And maybe I want to rotate it. Picasso was known for taking anatomy and really kind of pushing the boundaries of what it should look like. And then we're going to right click, paste style. And that pasted this style here, right here. Now, if I wanted to paste that style, I could do that too. I could go back up to the truck. It's right here. And I could go copy layer style. I could get down to the eyeball paste layer style. And then it changed it to the same one as that. You do the whole image, ladies and gentlemen. You do the entire image. You tile the whole thing. All overlapping images. This T-post, you could do this. Maybe you want to stretch it. Maybe you want to rotate it and angle it a little bit. Maybe I want to use that same layer style on it that we just used. There it is. Keep going through. Layer, tile, the entire thing. I think my sample has 25 different tiles. What you're not going to do is you're not going to go through and... Um, I'm just going to group these so I can show you real quickly. You're not just going to go through and be like, okay, here's one layer. That looks good. Uh, here's another layer. Over here, that cow's face. That looks good. I'm going to do another one of the fence, you know. So you have like just a couple layers. You're not doing that. You're doing multiples. You're doing multiples. So you're not just going to do that and then put a layer style on it and go here. Maybe rotate that and just throw a couple on it and call it good. You're not doing that. You're doing the whole thing. You're doing small pieces. You're making it look awesome. Okay. So I'm going to delete those. Turn this back on. And so imagine for a second that the whole thing's tiled. Here's your next step. Your next step is you're going to put some symbols on your picture. At least two different ones. You could do multiples of it. The symbols are down here, the shortcut's U, it's called custom shape. You go up here to your shapes, there's a bunch. You can add more. There, add the, add, um, I just added the default ones at the bottom. Okay, somewhere. I don't think it did, hold on me. Add default shapes. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's the same shapes. Okay, so now let's say, I don't know, there's a tree. I like this tree right here. I'm going to drag it. I'm going to place it like this. Okay. Kind of ugly, whatever. I'm only put a tree out here because we're outside and there's trees in the background. If I were doing a picture of, like, I don't know, my sister, and I love my little sister, I might put a heart shape or something. There's lots of different shapes you can use. Oh, here's some flowers. Okay, here's an ostrich running around. Boats, trees, leaves, I don't know. Let's grab a flower or something. Put a little flower right, right by his nose. There you go. Okay, so let's imagine that I have two symbols that has something to do with the picture if possible. Let's imagine the entire thing is tiled. The next step. Grab your hue and saturation. Make sure you're on the top layer when you do this. You're putting an adjustment layer, hue and saturation on top of the entire photograph. The button you want to click is called Colorize. It's right here. Move this over so you can see it. Now, we are going to colorize this photo. We need to decide what color you want it. We need to decide your saturation levels. Lightness, darkness, somewhere in the middle is great. 
So maybe we like this really red or orangey red. Okay, right there. Now, what can we do with this? We can decrease the opacity if we want it not quite so vibrant. Bring it down a little bit, maybe 30, 40, 50, 70%. The other thing you could do is you could change the blend mode on it. Let's make that big again so we can see it. You know, there's lots of things here. Like, that kind of looks cool. I kind of like that right there. That's pin light. That blue turned to pinkish. We have this like orangey yellow pink colors in the background. We got to do um, different symbols. We have accomplished the goal. We are doing two of these images. You have to have symbols. You have to have the entire thing tiled. For my demonstration, I did not tile the whole image. I only did a couple tiles.